I got into art at a young age. After sports didn't work out, I just kind of started doing art full time. Through high school, eventually through college, I really buckled down and really got into the whole fine art illustrative scene. Alongside and parallel through high school, I was into the graffiti scene. The two kind of just met in the middle when I got into the muralist scene and kind of just snowballed from there. Street art, murals, it's either that or blank wall. You know, the world looks like a prison. Everything's sterile. I'm Max Sansing. I'm a fine artist and muralist. I don't really want to just put up art for art's sake or just, hey, here's my artwork, here's my Instagram. I want to be able to do purposeful pieces. I grew up on the south side off of 79th Street in Avalon Park. I only ever lived in one place and I love where I'm from and the people who raised me and the people who influenced me. My father, he was a painter and his artwork came from a real honest place. Every time I see it, it makes me think 79th Street, you know, the people I knew and I grew up with and want my artwork to do the same thing. I believe Southside gets a really bad rap, but it's just home, neighborhood, community, and just like any other place. All the things that people love and dig and compliment me for on my artwork, that comes from that. That comes from that thing that people are scared to go see and visit on the south side. When you're doing public art, there's a different type of responsibility, I feel, where it's like you're doing your work, but you're putting it in a space where people live every day. And the same way we kind of trip about billboards that go up in our neighborhoods and how it affects the youth, it's the same thing with the art. Like the art can also kind of uh, either play a good part in terms of the culture that's there or a bad part. Artwork is portraiture. People can kind of see themselves in it. It's ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances. The way I paint my portraits, I try not to do facial tones. I like to do just a lot of extreme colors. I paint people in red, blue, purple, I just always thought it was kind of cool just to be able to take people and put them beyond what you see every day. What if we were beyond this color, you know? Children are the future. These are the ones who inherit the neighborhood, the community. If you do them well, they do the neighborhood that well. So for kids to be able to see people that look like them in their neighborhood painted in like monumental ways, that does something to you. Culture is what lasts. Even in the community where I come from, the people who were there before, there's remnants. There's old murals, there's old advertisements. Those things are still there. We've seen in Chicago alone, wherever the culture is strong, the neighborhood is strong. And so I always try to make sure that people come see the work, see the culture that's reflected through the artwork. And also when they're there, maybe come and check out some of the small businesses. on the south side unveiling my newest mural along with Kayla McCaffrey's mural as well. We did these two projects alongside the Southeast Chicago Chamber of Commerce. A lot of times on the south side the media portrays a very negative portrayal of what the community experience is but people who live and grow up here know a completely different story. Before we met Max, we didn't have any public murals within our boundaries. So over three miles of area and nothing to act as a cultural identifier in this community. The murals that Max creates all have a very futuristic, idealistic, empowering approach to what community can feel like. When you get to meet somebody like Max, who has been all around the world traveling and painting, and you see that he gets the most excited about doing something right where he grew up, you just become ecstatic. He will shift things that could probably pay him a lot more <laughs> and be greatly more beneficial to his fame, but because of his roots, he will make sure that his community is taken care of. 
What a talent. I know, and I love his name. <laughs> He's back to talk us through everything we need to know in the world of street art. The expert, author, and poet, Kevin Koval. Yeah. Welcome, Kevin. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thanks for having me back. OK, so let's talk about Max, who we all absolutely love. And we just fell in love. You've been knowing him. But yeah. talk about the transition from illegal street art to legal street art. Yeah, I think Max started as a graffiti writer, you know, and coming up, seeing graffiti in the streets of Chicago. Also super into comic books and hip hop culture, and then wanted to draw. And I mean, graffiti is a way for young people to access the canvas that isn't often allotted to them maybe in schools because art in schools is underfunded or defunded. Right. And so kids take to the streets because they want the ability to create. Um, but Max then has also found a way to transition from making illegal pieces into being commissioned to do these giant, beautiful, yeah. vibrant murals and also maintain a really rigorous studio art practice where he's showing uh, inside of galleries. I think Max is the kind of artist that eventually we'll see in and also on the outside of museums for yeah, sure. Now, can he make a full-time living and a good living doing this? Now, now. I mean, it's taken a while. Uh, you know, Max started, um, you know, as a... It, Art was a uh, part of his love and his passion. A lot of side hustles. He came up uh, as a studio assistant with Hebrew Brantley, um, mm -hmm. and then has been able, in the last several years, to transition into his own full-time studio practice. And the murals is a way to also practice his art and subsidize his, his studio practice. Mm -hmm. Is that transition hard? Like, is it does it take a long time? Is it difficult to do? I think. I think you have to be really committed to the craft. I think you have to really dedicate yourself to becoming excellent outside of uh, formal education. And you know, Max has been trained in a lot of different spaces, and I think he's a student by nature. To me, Max is in a, in a great tradition of Chicago public muralists. Uh, going back to Charles White, who was commissioned by the WPA projects, uh, Charles White was a teacher of Kerry James Marshall. And uh, Max, I think, is in that lineage when we okay. think about um, you know, black Chicago public art and artists who have also made Max. the transition into into the fine arts. How space. long does it take them to do one of these? My one question of these giant exactly. pieces. A good weekend, yeah. maybe. You know, one weekend? yeah, a good weekend. No I mean, way. Um, because like something like this in one weekend. Well, th this 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 because it's a bigger production might have taken a week, but he works very quickly because he has that experience of being a graffiti writer and doing a piece in sure. seconds. Um, of course, this is pre-planned, pre-sketched, and then, you know, I mean, I, the, the piece we just saw, I think, took a weekend. I want to ask yeah. how many bottles of spray paint, or cans of spray paint. <laughs> many. But. That's why he gets, you know, funders to, to help supplement, of course, the, right. the cost of the art. Amazing. Right. Kevin, yeah. thank you so thank much. Thank you all.